In this video, we present our work on motion primitives-based path planning for fast and agile exploration using aerial robots. The goal of this work is to develop an exploration path planner suitable for environments which are simultaneously large-scale and narrow. Current solutions for the exploration problem tackle relatively small-scale environments that are spacious to navigate. Also, most methods perform kinematic planning without considering the dynamics of the robot. Through this work, we propose a method that is capable of fast exploration, can plan through extremely narrow environments, and be resilient to possible collisions due to high exploration speed. The focus of this work is on aerial robots as they are ideal for the environments considered due to their small size and agile nature. To address the above problem, we propose a motion primitives-based path planning methodology. Paths are generated by sampling the control space of the robot. Hence, they respect the dynamics of the robot aiding to the high-speed motion. The proposed planner uses VoxBlocks as the mapping framework. It is based on truncated sign distance fields and has been demonstrated to generate Euclidean sign distance fields dynamically and fast. This enables the rapid collision checking required for fast exploration. To enable continuous exploration, the next exploration path is calculated during the execution of the current path. To achieve maximum collision safety, and due to the fact that the planned paths do not end in zero velocity states, the method continuously checks for the availability of a future path which will stop the robot without collision in case the planner fails to calculate the next path in time. We now present our algorithm in detail. In the first step of the algorithm, we build a tree of motion primitives by sampling linear acceleration as our control input. In the following scenario, an instance of an exploration mission is shown. The green arrow illustrates the current velocity direction of the robot. First, an acceleration is sampled from the acceleration space of the robot. Using this acceleration as the control input, the state of the robot after a certain time interval is calculated using the formula shown. We then check if this state is in collision with any objects using the volumetric map generated by VoxBlox. If the state lies in free space, it is then added to the tree. Otherwise, this state is rejected and a new acceleration is sampled. This procedure is repeated for all states added to the tree until we form a tree of desired specifications. In the next step of the algorithm, we calculate the exploration gain to select the best path from the motion primitive tree. All paths in the motion primitive tree are first checked for future safety. Starting from the end point of every path, a stopping path is calculated by applying acceleration inputs from a fixed set of acceleration inputs. If one acceleration is found which brings the robot to a stop through a path lying completely in free space, that path is kept, else it is removed. In the figure shown, the path on top does not have any possible stopping paths. The path on the bottom has one stopping path. Next, we compute the volumetric gain for each vertex in the tree. This gain is defined as the total unknown volume which would be perceived by the depth sensor on board the robot if the robot were located at that vertex. To improve the behavior of the planner, we add two more decay functions along with the volumetric gain. The first is the time cost to traverse the whole path. The second relates to the deviation of the path from the current exploration direction. Using these decay functions, the final volumetric gain is calculated using the formula shown here. Finally, the path having the highest volumetric gain is selected and followed by the robot. This procedure is repeated for continuous exploration of the environment. Note that the next exploration path is calculated before reaching the end of the current path to facilitate continuous exploration. In order to evaluate the performance of the planner, tests in simulation and real-world experiments were conducted. Here we present the results of our tests in the simulation. The simulator Rotor-S was used in these experiments with a simulated DJI Matrice 100 robot, having a VLP-16 LiDAR and an upward-facing PicoFlex depth camera for mapping. Two experiments were performed on two different types of environments. In the first, shown in the top half of the figure on the right, the environment is a subway station model. This model has wide open rooms and three levels accessible through staircases. The robot was able to explore all three levels. The next experiment was conducted in a model of an underground mine. The mine consists of long and narrow corridors having multiple muck bays, intersections, and a slope at the end. The results of this mission are shown in the bottom half of the right hand side figure. The plots at the bottom show the amount of volume explored as a function of time. 
This experiment in particular demonstrates the rapid exploration behavior of the planner even in the constrained space of the mine. The robot was deployed near the entrance of the mine, autonomously entered the mine, and continued to progressively explore the main drift at an average speed of 1.8 meters per second. Visible here is the tree of motion primitive paths sampled by the planner using 3D acceleration inputs. The selected best path, which maximizes the calculated volumetric gain, respects the planner's safety constraints, and maximizes the path similarity metric is also shown. The dark and dusty conditions, combined with the constrained nature of the mine, demonstrate the safe and rapid exploration behavior of the planner. In the second experiment, the collision resilient properties of the robot are exploited to autonomously explore an extremely narrow abandoned mine in northern Nevada. The robot was deployed from within the mine, autonomously explored the drift, passing through spaces as narrow as 0.8 meters. As presented, the exploration continued even after experiencing collisions with the walls of the mine within tolerable limits. In this slide, we present the results of the experiments in the Lucerne mine. This is a long underground mine with spacious corridors. The aim of this experiment is to demonstrate the fast exploration ability of the planner. In this experiment, the robot explored the full length of the mine with an average speed of 1.8 meters per second. The figure on the bottom shows the map generated from the mission and some sample planning steps. The motion primitive tree and the selected path can be seen at three different instances. The plot on the right shows the exploration rate for this mission. The second experiment was conducted in the abandoned collar mine. This is an underground, extremely narrow mine having widths ranging from 0.8 meters to 1.2 meters. The aim of this experiment is to evaluate the performance of the planner in an extremely narrow environment under the possibility of collision. The constraint of future safety paths were relaxed in this experiment due to the nature of the environment. The figure on the right shows the reconstructed map from the mission, and the plot at the bottom shows the expiration rate. Here we present an extension of the work presented in the paper. This work adds two new features to the current exploration planner. First is a global planning layer. In large-scale environments having multiple branches, the robot needs to be repositioned to a new branch once the current branch is fully explored. Also, due to battery constraints, the robot must return to its home position before the battery is fully drained. To tackle these problems, the global planner iteratively builds a graph of states, sampled from the motion primitive trees in the local planning step. Vertices having high volumetric gain are marked as possible frontiers of exploration. This graph is then used to plan paths for repositioning the robot to one of these frontiers and homing. The figures at the bottom show the graph, the repositioning, and the homing paths. The second addition is dynamic replanning of the global path in case of obstacles not previously observed. The path segment in collision is removed and replaced by selecting a path from a tree of motion primitives spanned between the vertices which need to be joined. With this, we conclude our presentation. Thank you for attending.